Hello YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita. Welcome, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you all so much for the love and the continued support of my channel. You guys, guess what? Y'all been requesting this since the beginning of time. The time has come and get ready with me. <laughs> and you will also be getting to know me. I put a feeler out, um, wanted to see, you know, what questions you all have for me. I couldn't answer them all, but whatever I didn't get to, hopefully I can do another get ready with me depending on how this video is received and I will answer the remainder of the questions but I didn't want the video to be too long so you guys if you want to get to know me a little better and if you want to know how to achieve this particular look <laughs> just keep watching <laughs> so this is my skin already prepped um and this is what i look like with no makeup okay so <sighs> y'all <laughs> when i say i had serious anxiety for since the start of my channel um about doing to get ready with me just because i just i don't know like i'm not jackie Ina. <laughs> But this has been so highly requested. I said, you know what? It's high time we had a Q&A because I feel like you all want to get to know me a little better. Um, and I also feel like it's high time we did to get ready with me. Like every single video, <laughs> y'all are asking. So here it is, all right? All right, so if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm looking at my monitor, at the questions. So my skin, like I said, is prepped. And what I um, prepped it with is Laneige. Um, this is the Blue Hyaluronic Exfoliating Toner. For so long, I have been using, I think it was like the Water Essence. I think that one was discontinued. Um, so I'm using that one now. And I'm also using the Royal Honey Propolis Enriched Cream Mist. Um, now, I'm not going to be going through every single product that I'm using because this makeup, you guys, is makeup that I do for camera, for film. Way more makeup, <laughs> much more heavier than I would wear on a daily basis or like even just going out for like a date night or something. It still wouldn't be this much makeup because makeup, you got to be beat when you get on camera because it doesn't show up. Like in real life, it will look like really, really, really heavy makeup. On camera, you just look porch. Like, <laughs> so I'm showing you what you see. So this is gonna be like a full beat down because that's what y'all used to seeing. That's what y'all been requesting. <laughs> and um, if you want like really in-depth tutorials, I feel like Harouche, <laughs> which I've mentioned her before, bench watch her content, okay? Because she's super, super detailed. Also, uh, Tamira Renee, she's super detailed, but I feel like she has so many like easy to do glams. Like she's not gonna be using 12 colors on her eyes. She's not gonna be, you know, cutting the crease every third video. Like it's it's very doable, but you still look absolutely phenomenal. So what else did I prep with? Oh, my lips, uh, the Sugar Lip Wonder Drops by Fresh. And this one is almost empty, but this is the Guerlain um, Royale Advanced something something youth watery oil pretty much it just gives you the best glow so this is what we're starting with and as you can see my under eye area is it's not that I have dark under eye circles it's more so that you know I'm over 40 so we start to lose volume in our face and I feel like my under eye just kind of sinks in like my sister's like that my mom is like that so yeah, so let me get to these questions. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do my makeup. If I feel like I have a really, you know, good tip that people may want to know or need to know, then I'll break from the actual list of questions and then, you know, explain that little makeup tidbit and then we'll get back to questions. All right, you guys. So my sense of the day, let's go start with that, is um, Fleur Narcotique. Beautiful scent, um, but I'm actually wearing it today because I'm about to film. I'm getting ready with me to get ready to film. <laughs> um, I'm not going anywhere in particular. So I'm going to do a comparison video with uh, um, the new PDM drop, Balea, with the um, Fleur Narcotique, same nose. And I just feel like P 
people have been asking and asking like, girl, are you gonna review the new PDM? Are you gonna review the new PDM? And we'll get into all of the above on uh, the video. So yeah, looks, stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna prep again, like you can never over prep your face <laughs> for makeup. Rare Beauty Setting Mist. I like to apply my foundation um, to like moistened damp skin. I'm going to use the Hydro Grip Primer. This one is literally on its last pump. Hopefully there's enough. Yes, okay. So, primer. Only where you kind of really need it, which is kind of like in the center of the face and like the forehead. So, first question someone asked is, uh, would you ever have your daughter on the channel or use fragrances with you? Y'all, I've been asking her since I started the channel <laughs> to come on this channel. She always agrees, but then it's like, I film super early in the morning. Um, usually when she's in school. So it's just coordinating schedule, honey. And of course, like when we're both here at the same time, she's just not with it. So I'm, I'm on her, I'm on her and hopefully um, she agrees. So after I prime, I like to set my primer with powder <laughs> because this just makes everything last even longer. I kind of wait until like my primer is completely dry. And then I'll go in really heavy and usually around the areas that I get sweaty and oily first, which is gonna be my nose and around like my mouth, so. Those are the only places I do it. And I'm prepping, and I'm, I'm sorry, and I'm using the pressed powder by Charlotte Tilbury, which is, baby, you need some out hidden pan. I need more of this, this is the best. So after I've done that, and I know they look like really dark, <laughs> just because, um, it is, I mean, it's a deeper color, which, my foundation is a little deeper because I like to go really warm um, and then it's gonna balance out when I put on my, my um, concealer. So, yeah. so just anywhere I'm kinda, you know, dark. Then I will use uh, KBD Beauty number 40. Concealer brush to kind of smooth it out. Now your corrector don't need to go all over your face. It is just for the areas of darkness that you're trying to neutralize or correct. So don't put it anywhere else. Like don't do that. <laughs> um, so like I said, definitely my eye. Area. Would you ever consider vlogging your life? Eventually, I want to get into vlogs. I feel like I'm just a horrible vlogger. <laughs> like, I've done it on vacation. Like, if you go and look at my very first video, um, which was about me going to Turkey to get my, um, my teeth done. I vlogged and I swear my, my twin sister, I have a twin. <laughs> If you didn't know that, um, like I would forget. And like, she would be like, oh, we should be recording this right now. Like she literally had to take over like most of the vlogging. Just because, I mean, I don't know. Like sometimes you're on vacation, you really wanna try to stay in the moment, which is always hard for me anyway. And it's like, you can't really do that when you're vlogging. Now my life, my everyday personal life, girl, it is nothing to see. Like it is nothing to see here. I literally am a workaholic. All I do is work, work out, and repeat. <laughs> like I do not have a big social life. I mean, contrary to what you may think, I work 12 hour shifts, first of all. And that literally will leave you two hours to yourself once you get off. That's enough time to eat, have a moment with your child. <laughs> and it's like, it's time to go to bed. And it's like, I work out really quickly. You know, I do short workouts when I get home after work. 
So, now the caveat to that is because we're on 12s, we work short week and a long week. My short week, I only work two days a week. I'm off five. Okay, so that, those off days, I still work extra jobs, which are police extra jobs. And I also um, work YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is so much hard work, you guys. Like you would not even believe, like to put out content consistently of high quality, like hell, even to put out cons consistent YouTube of low quality, it's still a lot of work, I'm telling you. It's not for the faint of hearts. Um, and it is just, it's a lot, it is a lot. So someone asked me also, is YouTube lucrative? Um, and kind of like, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about starting a fragrance channel? First of all, uh, well, try the True Concealer, worn this way, <laughs> in the shade Butterscotch. I'm gonna try to link as many products as I can below. But YouTube, hold on. I kinda like to cover this a little bit, my foundation. YouTube, you guys, um, can, is obviously very lucrative like even for a small channel. Um, I don't wanna get into the weeds of exactly how much I made last year, um, but take for instance this month, I brought in four figures every week. Every week, okay, so we're talking about salary money. And my channel is extremely small, extremely small. But it, it just, it really depends on how you go about it because the more videos you're able to produce, the more AdSense you get to make, okay? Because that's all gonna be based on viewership. Um, do you link your products? It's plenty of big like YouTubers and fragrance, they don't, do affiliate links for their products. That brings me more money than the actual AdSense and YouTube. Um, so it just depends on how you run your channel, how profitable you can be. Some people do sponsored content. Some people don't do much sponsored content. Like, it just depends. But the opportunity, it is there. I let my concealer dry down like quite a bit before I like work it in. Um, but yeah because it will give you more coverage and I want all the coverage. <laughs> Y'all, why the minutes I decide to do a get ready with me, get a visitor. I swear I've only had like two pimples all year and then one decides to crop up last night, so. All right, but also while this drying down, I go ahead and get my brows kind of together. So you guys, my brows, I literally wake up like this because I've been microbladed for years, like probably about five years now. I've been microbladed. Um, oh, let me get my brow stuff. So when it comes to like day to day, I don't do anything in my brows, like nothing. But when I get ready to film, what I will do is I use the Benefit Brow Palette Browsings and it's a wax, it's got like different colors. Of, it looks a mess, my daughter took this over at one point and it's just horrible. Um, so you have different color waxes and you have powders. So when I do my brows, I start with the wax. And I'll probably try to zoom in on this part so you can see. Um, and it's kind of time for a touch up. Like I haven't had a touch up on my microblading in like two years. It's probably been like two years. And that's typically when I go for a touch up, but the more you get it, like the longer you go um, between actually needing a touch up. And I know it's time for a touch up when this little, cause this is the sparsest area naturally of my brows. So when that gets to be like a little gaping hole, <laughs> I'll know it's time for a touch up. Um, I go to like the best microblading lady in fucking in town. She does like the celebrities brows. Um, Taraji P. Henson I know goes to her. Um, she, yeah, she's she's got like 
a lot of A-list clients. And ugh, when I first booked her, it was literally like, I had to wait four months just to get an appointment with her, but she's the best. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about microblading, just go to someone who's really good and I will absolutely say do it. All that having to shape your brows, ha having them be sisters and not twins, all of that stuff is, it's over with. Like, you're gonna wake up to perfect brows every day. You're always gonna be looking a little bit more put together <laughs> just because your brows are always snatched. I mean, like, when I say put together, I mean like when you don't even have any makeup. You know, almost kind of like when you get lash extensions, how you just always look a little put extra together, <laughs> even with no makeup, it's gonna have the same effect. So I just like to fill in any little imperfections when I film, but like I said, other than that, I don't touch my brows. Um, this is the Anastasia, oh, shoot. Okay. So I go in and create little like dark hair strokes just because I have very like, sparse I want to say I want to say sparse yeah like my hair is really fine on my brows so even with the microblading just to add actual texture I will still go in and make like little like little dark hair strokes that can show up on camera just to create texture that's all and this pen is kind of like We have to go very light. Oh, very light with this pen. But if you overdo it, all you gotta do is just take your brush and just kind of go over it and it it lightens up. So the next thing, Anastasia, is this little, it's almost like a concealer pencil. Gone are the days are dipping my brush in concealer and having to like sculpt out my brows. I just take this, literally outline right up under, right up under. And then just pull down, pull down. I find that it's a lot more, um, easier to work with and I never carve out above my brow because when you do that carving you're, you're kind of like highlighting right you're highlighting the area so this is to lift the brow so if you're carving out above and below it's like girl what are we really trying to do you know it's like you're trying to lift the brow Okay, so I definitely do not carve out up under, I'm sorry, over my brow anymore. I know a lot of people still do. I don't, and I find that many professional makeup artists don't either. Um, so I just think it's a little dated and I don't do it. So I don't. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and start working in this concealer. I start on the outside. Blend it out. Let's take another question. Do I want more kids? Honey, I'm in my 40s. My child will be grown in four years. When I say hell, oh my God, what is this lint? Ugh. When I say hell, no, I don't want any more kids. This shop has been closed for some years now. Um. It's so funny because my godmom, we all went out to see Alvin Ailey and we went out to dinner and my godmom asked me like, girl, even if you met the one and y'all got married and he really wanted kids. So like, I'm gonna spit up my wine, girl. I will be 60. Like by the time my next child is grown, even if I got pregnant, like, you know, right away after meeting this man, which is never gonna happen. <laughs> um, the get pregnant part, not the meet the man part, but I was like, hell no, I'm not having no more kids. Like, are you insane? I feel like a lot of women you see having kids later on don't have any kids to begin with. Um, or kind of a oops, oops situation maybe. 
Um, but no, I don't want any more kids because that really, I'm talking about it really controls so much of your schedule, your life, um, travel. Like I love traveling and you just, can't do as much as you would like and it's really confined to like either the summer or spring break or you have to limit it to one week when they are on breaks it's just too much not only that i'm just i don't have the the brain cells and the patience <laughs> to start that over again i have no desire um yeah so no kids i would like to um i would like to be married but I mean, the older I get, it's like the less important it, it is to me. Like, I, if I don't get married, I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, I already had my child, the one child I'm gonna have. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm able to provide for myself. The companionship is great, but that doesn't always have to mean marriage. If you do meet somebody, it just, it depends, like. I felt like he was my soulmate and that was right for us, then sure. But if it never happens, I've, I'm have i okay with that as well. Like, because I don't feel like it's just like this necessity. <laughs> now that, um, you know, that I'm older, it's just certain things become less, you know, dire straits and super duper important. Like, of course, when I was in my 20s, I thought that that was like everything, but it's really not. <laughs> it's really not. The, I think the important things are that you are happy in whatever you're doing with your life and that you're chasing your dreams and that you making things happen for you making things happen for you, for yourself. Right? I feel like it's so bright in here. All right, so after I have my concealer on, I make sure that everything is pushed in fine lines so that it's not set, like, to show creases because once you start putting powders and stuff on, it's set, all right? So I actually take a powder foundation first. This is going to give you the smoothest, under eye area okay this is before you put on your regular powder your setting powder your baking powder okay you you go up on them eyes child because like I said my eyes my under eye sockets cave in so I want to not have that show up on camera so we're trying to get the smoothest under eye possible is my goal <laughs> and I'm using the uh, Fenty Beauty Pro filter powder foundation okay so that's pretty much in place and I'll take it and put on the nose contour when you do your nose contour make sure that the line is not too wide it should be not on the sides of your nose it should be literally all on the bridge as far as where you're highlighting because you don't want to make it look wider I mean, unless that's your actual goal. But you're just trying to highlight where the actual light would hit on your nose, which is gonna be on right on top. So after that, what I do, I, my Huda Beauty, um, what is this, the Easy Bake powder? I use the color Blondie. And it's just a holy grail powder. Like, it's very finely milled. Some people say that they don't like the fact that it's, um, Fragrance. So if it's fragrance, you leave your powder open for like a full day, go to work, come back home. That freight, like, it's not fragrant really anymore. You're not gonna be able to smell the fragrance if you leave your powder open and let those whatever perfume, alcohols kind of, you know, hit the air and disappear. You won't have that issue. So I go in and I'm gonna start speeding up the video right now so we can like not have this video be two hours long, but I'm gonna go in real quick and lay a thin coat of powder, like push it in <laughs> before I start baking. And I use a lot of powder 
um, because it just looks really good on camera. Now, real life, I don't use a ton. I don't use a ton because it just, it looks crazy. <laughs> if you do it, you know, really heavy in, in real lighting, but yeah, so. Now, once I get that all laid down, then I go and I put in a really, you know, a real baking layer, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up and then we're gonna get to eyes where we take some more questions from your Q and A. <laughs> powder at the beginning of my eyebrows so that it is never a harsh start. I hate seeing when people have a really harsh start to their eyebrows. Like they take a whole liner, carve it out of, oh, don't please. It just looks, it's, it's really dated to me and it just doesn't look good or natural. So light start to the brow. And if you feel like it's too dark then just put a little powder, this is gonna lighten up, but it's gonna give you like you know, I um, I mean, it's gonna, the eyebrows are still gonna darken up a little bit here. It's not gonna be as obvious, but it's gonna give you like this transitioning start and not harsh, if that makes any sense. All right, speed it back up. <laughs> All right, so while I'm baking, I go ahead and do um, my eyeshadow. And you guys, um, I just, I'm gonna do like an easy bronzy look, okay? I always use more than one palette, but you know what? Let's just make a decision to make it easier <laughs> for everyone out there. We're just gonna go with, ooh, do I wanna, Natasha Denona is like my go-to. Like her palettes are just top tier. Um, sunset palette or bronze palette. Dude, what do I wanna do? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna do sunset. We're gonna do sunset today, all right? So it's gonna be this one, which is the bigger palette, so it's a little bit pricier, but if you can catch a sale, okay? I need you to go ahead and uh, and scoop it up. So, uh, contrary to proper belief, <laughs> even if you have darker skin, you can almost wear any color eyeshadow as long as you have a warm transition color warm transition so i almost always start with like you know like a orange or something and just something warm um that is key that is key because you don't want to have like um warm skin hold on let me, before I start this, let me put a little bit of primer a little bit of primer on my lids first you don't want to, like say if I went with like a purple or like a cool tone, it, it looks harsher. It doesn't look as blended and it doesn't look, in my opinion, as good um, as it could on my skin tone if I used a warm transition. So just keep that in mind if you feel like Oh, this color's not gonna work for me. Chances are it will. Um, you just need to know how to transition the colors into your natural skin. I need to set my primers just lightly so that it's smooth. Um, because it can start to like break up if you don't. If you don't set it in place. All right, so. Okay, so back to questions. What prompted you to start? your fragrance YouTube channel. You guys, when I first started my channel, like I said, my very first video was literally just, I wanted to to document um, my dental center turkey smell makeover. So that's how it started, right? And I really loved the process of filming. And just to let you know, I have like all this really pricey expensive equipment. <laughs> so much of this already had on hand, like 
I taught myself portrait photography um, probably about a year before the pandemic. And then the pandemic hit and you know, when well, nobody meeting for no photo shoots um, and, and taking no pictures. So <laughs> um, I kind of started my channel a little after the pandemic but still I mean 2021 you know we still kind of reeling and and not quite into being around a bunch of people at that point well I wasn't like girl I wasn't huh, I wasn't trying to be around no damn body let me tell you that right now um and I was shooting clients like out of my home so that was that was another factor so yeah um but I had a lot of equipment already on hand from that like my camera I purchased these big, huge lights. Really the only thing I needed to purchase to start was um, like my boom mic. I have a mic above my head. Um, just because the bottles and stuff, like I didn't want to be putting down perfume bottles and click clacking and you know, with the mic like right in front of me. I don't like the look of a lapel mic. Um, if that's all I could afford, absolutely would just have to work. But I just wanted a good quality mic because sound sometimes can be more important than the camera quality. So if you're thinking about starting a channel, make sure your sound is all the way together. If you must start with an iPhone, that's fine. If you have to start with that, that is fine. The most important thing is that you get started. But in my opinion, your channel will grow so much faster um, if you really invest in the quality of your camera and your lens. Um, I mean, we, we're perfume collectors. How much, you know, in thousands do we have sitting in these cases? You know, unload a couple, a couple bottles of stuff you know you are not resonating with. Unload those on Macari. Get you a couple stacks and get your quality up because you have the means to if you have, you know, two, three hundred um, bottle niche collection. Like, you ain't gotta go broke trying to afford the equipment, but me, I like putting, like the money I get, I like to put it back in my channel. Whether if it's, um, you know, buying new plugins for the production, if it is, you know, um, upgrading whatever I feel like can be upgraded, that is what I would invest in, you know, in the beginning of, of my YouTube journey. Like make sure your quality is on point because people will automatically take you seriously. They will automatically take you seriously and it's important. Like especially now nowadays, girl, yo, these iPhones, iPhone 14, like you got no excuse. You got no excuses. People expect some level of quality because even the cell phone. So if you come up in here with some, some fuzzy video that like it was made in 1990, Nobody is gonna subscribe to that. Nobody is gonna subscribe. Even if you just gotta upgrade it, upgrade your phone, child. <laughs> just upgrade, you know, as best you can and when it is needed. Like lighting needs to be on point. At, you know, at some point, like that makes a huge difference. And for me, honey, being a woman of color, it is hard to light us. <laughs> Um, and it doesn't stop there. You gotta learn how to color grade because black people show up gray post-production. We show up very gray on camera. So yeah, there's that. I edit everything on Final Cut Pro. Um, easy to use, but there's gonna be a learning curve, but you'll get it. Like I'm, I'm of the mindset that I can learn when I say anything, <laughs> I can learn how to do anything. You know, I didn't know how to use a camera uh, three years ago. I don't know anything about it. Never shot a video before my YouTube. Um, didn't know anything about editing a video, post-production, none of that. But if you're really committed, you'll get it, you'll learn it. It's just, do, how bad do you want it? Like, how bad do you want it? Someone asked, would I consider doing 
uh, YouTube full time. Absolutely. Like that is what I would love to do. I would love to just get up every morning, every day and create content. Like what? That would be the ultimate because even just this little taste of honey, if I lost my job today, I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> if I got fired, if I like, if something like I will be okay financially because the YouTube money is, is what I'm telling you. If you're thinking about starting, you need to start. Don't let anything hold you back or stop you. Don't let anything, anyone hold you back from making your coins, okay? From chasing your dream, you know? Of course I thought, oh my God, like starting a YouTube, girl, you're almost 40. Nobody gonna watch you. <laughs> you don't know nothing about fragrance. Um. But I learned along the way. Like, I stumbled upon fragrance. I don't even know, you know what? I remember. I was watching makeup tutorials, binging on Harush's content, right? And she, every now and again, will drop a fragrance video. And it was a whirlwind love affair ever since. From there, I feel like they started just recommending fragrance content. I feel like one of the first YouTube like fragrance people I, I stumbled upon after that was Fat Finds by Keetra. If you don't follow her, what the hell? <laughs> Get your life. I need you to follow my sis. Um, and then from there, she mentioned A.I. the Great. So I was like, who the hell is A.I. the Great? Honey found her channel. And that, honey, okay. You ain't got no money to spend on fragrance. Tread lightly on visiting A.I. the Great because she gonna have your ass up in there buying shit. <laughs> Like that is when my whole niche, like it, it just took over. It just took over. It brings me, so, fragrance brings me so much joy. Like I've never felt a depressed moment, had a sad day, like none of that. None of that since fragrance has come into my life. Um, Yeah, started my channel. Like I love it, I love it. It's a lot of hard work, but I love it. Like no one has to push you to get up out of bed and film. No one's gonna do that. No one, you know, has to push me to sit down, honey, at these videos, you know. Like you don't have time to be going out and chilling every third second of free time that you get. You just don't when you are really trying to build, you know, um, a career out of this. And yes, that is my ultimate goal. So, Let's go ahead and get in this bronzer, honey, because I go deep and I go hard with bronzer. Again, we can look very gray, wash out. So it's very important that I really warm my face up. That's another reason why I like to go a little um, deeper with my foundation color than what I normally have to go. And same with bronzer. Charlotte Tilbury, I use the deepest one. Um, just to kind of carve out certain areas and then I go on top with the MAC um, bronzer in the shade uh, Karimba. This is the most epic bronzer. <laughs> it's so warm and it's so beautiful. Quick tip, when you're putting these lines and stuff and bronzer on your face, you need to start a little high, higher than what you think, higher than the, d the dark line is actually. And you need to blend up. Blend up because you don't want to drag down your face. I'm over 40, we already got enough dragging down. We don't want to, to add to that. We want to uplift, we want to uplift. So I start with the darker one. Then we go in with the one that's a little lighter and warmer. And I'm talking about my ass goes hard <laughs> with bronze in this big old five head, honey. Yes. We go in, okay? Now, before I do my shadow up under my eyes, I go ahead and dust off my excess powders. I'm gonna dust it off and then I'm still gonna go back in. Up with my damp beauty blender and press it 
the excess, well, whatever is still on here, after I brush it away, I'm gonna press that into my skin. start with a darker color and then I go over it with something close in color but just a little lighter and come outward so I'm starting with like a darker color like this one right up on you know close to my lash line right then I go a little lighter like something like this just below it with a brush that I can easily smudge with like something like this and don't be afraid to really come down like all the way down where you see like the little lines of your eye because I have long uh, I have long lower lashes so once I put on the mascara so after that, you see where this line is. You'll see lines that kind of have this demarcation, this line of demarcation between the bronzer and the highlight. That is where your setting powder comes in. That's why I like to use something that is lighter than the bronzer, close to my skin tone, so that you can kind of get rid of those lines quite easily. So you see this is harsh. And then you look and you see that this is not so harsh, right? So, and you're gonna do the same thing up under. So I'm just setting all the rest of my foundation in place, and getting rid of any lines, any harsh lines, because what we don't want is harsh lines. And do not be afraid to go with the powder. This is gonna also help to get rid of any harsh lines um, with my nose contour. And we're gonna do the same up here with the forehead. See how it kind of brings everything together? Like, so you can go as deep <laughs> and as light as you want, as long as you have something bringing the two together. The blush is also gonna help snatch everything together. So I'm using this NARS Quad Palette, which is the best palette known to man, and it was like an Ulta exclusive. Um, but this exhibit A, honey, if you're having a red lip and you're trying to bring them, them cheeks out, it's, it looks red, like it looks red, but it's really just a really, 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 really hot orange. And I love this color. So what I do normally is go in with a powder because it's so pigmented, like powder blushes are just more pigmented. So I always go in with, um, powder first and then I go over it with a um, not a liquid what is this like a cream stick or cream bronzer because I'm not cream blonde, a cream blush because this will actually start to add highlight really natural highlight to the skin so that is the way I do my blush And do not be afraid to go in with your blush because that is the one thing that is the hardest to get to show up on camera. It is so, oh my God, like, you gotta look like a clown with blush for it to show up on camera. Like, if you don't look absolutely preposterous <laughs> in person with the amount of blush, then you know, like in person, like you know it's not enough for camera. You know it's not. Like you really gotta get in there. You really gotta get in there. Okay, so we're gonna take the last few questions um, and then I'm gonna pop off camera to do my liner and my lashes just because I'm not gonna be able to talk or concentrate or explain anything while I'm doing that because that's the hardest part always for me. Um, someone literally asked me red lippy recommendations for women of color and what's the difference between sister locks and micro locks? 
I got a whole video on sister locks versus micro locks. If you go to my homepage, it should be right up there in the top because that's like one of the top seven performing videos. Um, and yeah, there's a whole video dedicated to that because it's a lot that goes into answering that question. So check that video out, sis. And to answer red lippies that are good for women of color, you don't even need to think about it. Just go ahead and add these to cart. This is going to be um, It's Cherry, number 11, Sephora brand lip liner. And also Sephora brand lip liner, this is Cherry Moon. The bluer, the better, okay? You can be alabaster white <laughs> um, and be a woman of color and you can be deep, dark, like indigo, blue, damn near dark, deep skin, be a woman of color. A blue red is going to work on the entire spectrum. And this is like one of the bluest reds that I've seen that I have. I just ordered a color from the lip bar, which is supposed to be a blue toned, like pink, like a blue toned fuchsia almost, like really deep. Oh, cannot wait to get that. And I'll let y'all know my thoughts on that. But I'm gonna stop talking while I line these lips. Y'all, these Sephora formulas are the bomb. Don't sleep on their lip lippies. Oh shit. <laughs> See, I need to stop trying to talk. Don't sleep on their lippies and don't sleep on their blushes. Oh my God. Their blushes are better than ours. They're so pigmented, it don't make no sense. And I naturally have a really dark outer line to my lips. And so many people think I just wear a brown lip liner all the time. I don't. <laughs> it's just how my lips are. Okay, two questions and then we're going to get dressed and I'll show y'all the final look after I've done my eyes. Okay, someone asked me, um, will I ever consider doing more Sister Lock content? Of course, I'm actually gonna shoot an update video probably this week or next week, but I shoot Sister Lock's content as I have new information to give, as I have updates. I really have to be inspired to shoot whatever it is I'm shooting. So that's why you don't see much because I don't do a bunch of styles to my hair. I don't like, I'm very, very minimal. Okay, so it's not a lot to report unless there's something to report. So I'm gonna give an update because it's been, I think at least six months since I did a Sister Lock's video. Um, a video about my hair transplant I'm sorry, hair implant. Well, yeah, hair transplant surgery is the, the term. I'm still thinking about that because I had it done so long ago and I really feel like that video needs to be thorough and like I would have to find the pictures. It's not out of the question, but I don't, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to figure out if it's something that I really wanna do, um, but I'll let you guys know. All right, and then the last question, um, actually two part. Do you have any fragrances that confuse you? Yes, okay. I can't decide if I like this fragrance or if I just wanna declutter it. Um, it's actually relatively new and I've just been so flip floppy about, um, is it Un Mad Nui is the name of the house and I think it's Jardin's Men's Spa. It's like a roll, jammy rolls, saffron scent and it's just, I don't know. I can't make up my mind about it. That one confuses me every time I wear it. I can't decide if I like it or not. Um, which means it's probably gonna go. But uh, last question is, is there a fragrance you feel out of love with? Yes. LaBelle. Jean-Paul Gaultier, LaBelle. 
I don't know if my bottle is just getting like old, like the juice, it's only two years old, but the color is very different and I just feel like it smells different. So I don't know if I'm falling out of love with the scent or if the juice is turning. Y'all, them bottles that don't come with the top, I'm telling you, I really do think it ages the juice faster without a cap. Like, you know, some are just designed that way, like the Montals and the, well, Montal at least has it going for them where they have like opaque bottles, but to be glass, <laughs> see-through glass and to have no cap, I don't know, I just feel like the juice is aging really quickly. Hey guys, so that is the finish, really blue, <laughs> red lip. That is the look, very simple look. Oh, let me show you what I'm wearing today. Yep, pick this up from H&M and I'm gonna have on some black slacks, like wide leg black slacks with that. I am going to get changed and I will be right back with the finished look in now. All right, you guys, so this is the look. Let me get up close. So just a simple bronze look. I did add some highlighter, which was the Rare Beauty highlighter. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. You guys, let me know what you think. Do you all wanna see more content like this? It was, I feel like I was filming forever, okay? So it was very time consuming, but hopefully we got some good footage and that you all learned a couple tips and that you enjoy getting to know me. So be sure that you are subscribed to this channel, you guys. Make sure notification bell is set to all and definitely give the video a big thumbs up if you like the content and would like to see more like this. It has been real. I love you all, YouTube, and I will catch you guys on the next one.